Hello, I'm David Haddock, uh, lead writer and uh, of Star Citizen, and welcome to another episode of Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy, where we, uh, the lore team, examine one of the many systems that you will find in the Star Citizen universe, and give you some detailed info about the system itself, some fun fictional facts, as well as some behind-the-scenes insight into the thought process behind the conception of the system. So uh, let's get started. We're going to head to our super pretty and award-winning, congratulations everyone, uh, star map. Uh, so here we are on Earth right now. I'll zoom out. So go out to our bathroom. And today we are going to go to Cathcart. Uh, that's right, the infamous outlaw, even though it's technically unclaimed, uh, system. So this was actually one of our oldest systems. Let's bring it up real quick. How was that for? Okay. All right. So we'll start start high level and get you a bit of a just kind of see where it lies in the grand scheme of things. So this is Cathcart uh, right here. You can see uh, it's sort of on the western or eastern side of of the known universe. Uh, Terra's over here. Uh, Earth is there. So it's pretty it's pretty close. Um, so again, this was actually one of our oldest systems, uh, not in the game sense, but in sort of the project development one. Uh, during the initial crowdfunding campaign, we had a point where uh, we generated uh, basically 10 systems uh, to help push us from $3 million to $4 million. And the idea being that each one was going to be unlocked at the each 100,000 mark. Uh, so Cathcart was one of them. Uh, I had written up a, the initial blurb uh, for the 10 systems, sent them to Chris, and then Ben uh, created a post around them, and Forrest worked up a picture for us to use. Uh, so I thought it would be kind of fun, a uh, trip down memory lane. Uh, here's the original description, uh, dredged up from a Word document from November 6, 2012. Uh, Cathcart system, pirate system, galactic junkyard, one sun, there is uh, there for light and a massive garbage disposal. It's literally a dumping ground of, on the side of a highway. The only official rule is that the route between jump points has to be clear at all times. Uh, although it still falls under UEE jurisdiction, it's become a conveniently located meeting spot for pirates and smugglers. No planets, natural ones anyhow. Squatters lash together wreckage of massive ships, orbital platforms, and whatever happened to be drifting around, pressurized them and created man-made planets. Most visitors tend to keep their suits on during their stay, as it's not unusual for the shoddy construction to give out and lose pressure. So that was the original pitch uh, for the system. And I mean, since then, we've stayed pretty close to it. Uh, but uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. But let's just dive right into the fiction of the system. And I'll throw in whatever weird rambling insights I can. Uh, so again, uh, Cathcart system here uh, was appropriately enough. Uh, the system was uh, officially discovered in 2438 by a wanted fugitive named Adelaide Loris. Uh, there had been speculation, basically, that Loris might have been using the system as like a, a private hideout uh, and might have gotten nervous when she saw uh, explorers scanning for jump points nearby and decided to cash in rather than risk one of them discovering it. So uh, in an ironic turn, uh, she named the system after Winton Cathcart, who was a marshal at the time, uh, who was effectively her nemesis sort of in law enforcement. The, Al Pacino to her Robert De Niro, if we're going to go with the heat metaphor. Uh, but anyway, her newfound wealth didn't last long, and uh, Loris would end up returning to a life of crime. And in another twist of irony, Cathcart was the one who shot her in 2464. So yeah. Uh, anyway, system itself, as you can see, is, let me go to 3D, is pretty empty. You have at the center a, whoa, yeah, uh, big, uh, basically it's a, a, a dwarf star, I think it's a type A, uh, which is apparently gives off like a bluish white color. But yeah, pretty much the place is dead. Uh, there are no planets to speak of. Uh, there's just basically a very large uh, asteroid belt that uh, encircles it. And uh, so needless to say, at the time it was passed off to the UNE, uh, they were not tremendously impressed. Uh, so uh, 
actually, this is kind of a fun turn of events. Uh, let's see if we can go wider here. You can see that basically uh, it was discovered from Davian system, and uh, the idea was that the, uh, after the discovery of Cathcart, it basically caused a bunch of people to flood into the system in 2438 to start looking for other jump points because it's that sort of thing where it's like, oh, you found one, maybe there's, there's more around. And uh, so one of those kind of wannabe explorers uh, turned out to be a guy named Vernon Tarr who ended up shooting at a passing ship because he was afraid that they were going to try and start scanning in their area. And that passing ship turned out to be a Banu. So he inadvertently discovered or made first contact. Uh, with an alien species. And so that was sort of in the wake of, of the Cathcar. So anyway, getting back to Cathcart. Uh, since there weren't any planets in Cathcart, the UNE didn't really know what to do with it. So um, they sort of toyed with the idea of making this like a, a location of like deep space comm experiments and stuff like that. But nothing ever came to fruition, and they ultimately scrapped it. Uh, so the government started using the system as a junkyard, basically kind of breaking down ships and storing them here because they could just kind of do it and, you know, leave it. And if they wanted to come back to the stuff, they could. If they didn't, if they wanted to just throw it in the sun, they could. Uh, there was no, basically there were no local residents to annoy uh, with trash. So over the years, basically, as kind of surrounding systems were discovered, Cathcart became more of a throughway uh, and junkyard. Uh, the UNE and then what became the UPE never officially claimed the system because there wasn't really anything to claim. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, in sort of the depths of the piles of trash and stuff like that, uh, some interesting things were happening. Uh, far away from the traveled shipping lanes, uh, industrial squatters uh, began to lash together abandoned pieces and repressurizing them and creating, creating basically like improvised space stations. Uh, and one in particular began to expand sort of over the years and became known as sort of the pirate city uh, known as Spider. Uh, and the origin of the name was, was, I think it was kicked around in an early uh, design art meeting, but there was this sort of idea that it would be to sort of have this kind of web-like appearance of all of these different pieces of ships kind of lashed together and, and stuff. So. Uh, I don't know if that, that aesthetic is going to stick anymore, but that was sort of the idea at the time. Um, but basically, spiders become sort of like the biggest, most concentrated haven of outlaws uh, sort of in the known, known universe, uh, their capital, if you want to call it that. Um, and we'd also toyed with the idea originally of having multiple landing zones, so you could kind of you know, uh, land in different sections of it, and each of them would be controlled by a different gang who would have their own kind of set of rules. And you know, again, I don't know if we're going to still be able to run with that idea, but it was sort of fun that you would have to, you know, landing in one section, you could do things that you couldn't do in another and stuff like that. But anyway, um, and actually, if you want to get sort of a, fla a taste of the flavor of it in the opening chapter of uh, the Lost Generation uh, serial story, uh, Tanya's buying a Tavarin codex uh, on Spider. But um, anyway, the overall idea was just to have it be that sort of dank, gritty, cyberpunky style space station with kind of crazy gut gangs, hive of villainy, et cetera, et cetera. But, but basically a place with the potential for a bunch of fun stories and characters. Uh, and apparently good waffles if you talk to King Shadow. Uh, but from a practical standpoint, we needed basically a major landing zone that would accommodate sort of the criminal characters. We have Earth, we've had Terra, and we just needed sort of a you know, third, third part to, to throw in there. Uh, and the, the actual inspiration behind the idea of it was uh, inspired by, uh, by the raft in the end of Snow Crash, if you've read that. If you haven't, go read it. Uh, basically, there was this massive flotilla of ships and oil tankers and boats that's slowly making its way across the ocean. And it was a really just great visual and a book of great visuals. So it was just, uh, but it did obviously create a lot of, uh, migraines in the dev team thinking about how we were going to possibly build something like this. But anyway, um, getting back to the history, so Cathcart pretty much is sort of, that, that was sort of its flavor and it stayed that way for, for quite some time. Uh, but something started to change probably in the 30th century. Uh, we'll go back to the star map just to kind of illustrate this. But uh, again, sort of seeing where it's, it's situated, uh, you have basically Cathcart here. Hades here, Nexus, which for a really long time was basically an unclaimed system, Min, and then uh, Tyrannus. And uh, so with this sort of cluster, actually less so than Tyrannus, but with this sort of cluster here, 
you had a, a pretty high concentration of, of unclaimed systems, and all of them were basically uh, uh, attracting a lot of people. Like they were become pretty, pretty settled, and particularly after during the Messer era when people were trying to get away from the sort of really oppressive uh, UAE government. I mean, not that there are many people probably living in Hades, just because it's sort of that dead, you know, uh, ancient civilization, civil war torn planet, you know, destroyed planet thing. But, uh, but even so, you still had like this sort of mass of unclaimed systems in the middle here. And, uh, but anyway, rumors started to spread basically that there was talk about kind of uniting all of these systems together to form sort of what we would, you know, equate to sort of an independent country uh, type thing. So it'd be independent of the UEE and uh, be its own, own type of government. So uh, in 29, I believe it was 31, uh, Dean Keller went on this thing, infamous thing called Keller's Run, where he basically he picked a fight in Cathcart and started this sort of sprawling system, system to system chase uh, that just looped in a bunch of criminals and bounty hunters and pirates and, and eventually law enforcement. And when, when the cops kind of started to jump in, they realized how little control that they could exert in this area. And uh, so many people believe that, uh, as you can see here, that Nexus is now a claimed UEE system that the reason why the UEE decided to reclaim the system and kick, every, kick all the criminals out was kind of to uh, not only establish some law and order in that area, but was also potentially to break up the bid of this sort of area of space from becoming sort of an, you know, I mean, an outlaw government is probably not accurate, but you, you, you get what I mean. Um, so anyway, uh, needless to say, a lot of people in Nexus system didn't take too kindly to being kicked out of their homes, so they started to basically fight with the UEE uh, in there. So the UEE simply held their ground and did their best to fed off the attacks, but uh, in 2935, there was this thing called uh, the Walzer Massacre, which was at uh, OP station Damien, which you will see in uh, Star Marine, which basically uh, the, a bunch of outlaws came in and just murdered a lot of people, and the government and the authorities basically, you know, the, the authorities kicked the hornet, or the, uh, the outlaws basically kicked the hornet's nest, if you will. Uh, so in response, the military convinced that supporters of the attack uh, were congregating in Cathcart, launched basically an intensive bombing campaign to try and decimate uh, a lot of the inhabitants. So it's, it was sort of not the message that this progressive UEE was really wanted to send, but uh, they attacked Spider in the sort of auspices of suppressing these violent insurgents. And, but due to the vast amount of trash and debris in the system, Navy ships weren't able to get close enough to effectively destroy Spider or make much of a dent overall, but they still, you know, hurt some people. Uh, and all, all it did ultimately was just kind of piss everybody off even more. Uh, so that's basically where we're at now. That was, the, the massacre was in 2935, so it's sort of, you know, the, the sort of wake of that is still relatively fresh. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so that's, that's pretty much Cathcart as it stands. Uh, and again, you know, obviously this team hasn't started to, to look at this system yet. So, you know, while this web-like network of, of lashed together capital ships uh, sounds really sweet, long story short, cool pirate system, awesome man-made uh, pirate base thing, and uh, not a lot of law. Anyway, uh, so that is Cathcart in a nutshell. But thank you for watching. Um, if you haven't, you should obviously, you know, if you haven't dug into the star map, I really, really recommend it. It is amazingly beautiful and full of really, really cool uh, little tidbits about the sort of the system at large for Star Citizen and where you guys will ultimately get to, to wander around. Um, I'd like to thank you to subscribers for helping us make shows like this and ATV and Bug Smashers possible. And a big thanks to all of the backers in general because you're the reason that we're here at all. So uh, I'm Dave Haddock, uh, this is Lore Maker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.